Hi, this is Alan Miola, and you're watching FourGuitarPlayersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching FourGuitarPlayersOnly.com. We're coming to you on location from Ann Arbor, Michigan, with a very, very special guest, Mr. Al Miola. How are you, Al? Great. Nice to be here. It's so nice, such, such an honor. I got to tell you, I have another site called ForBassPlayersOnly.com. Between the two sites, we've interviewed about 650 people, guitar players and bass players, including Paul McCartney, Jeff oh, Beck, Jimmy Page, Carlos Santana. Beautiful. Yes, yes, we did. And and uh, Victor Wooten, Marcus Miller, I got to tell you, honestly, I have never been more starstruck oh. than I am right now. I first learned about you probably around 1977, where my friend Friedbaum, okay, he said, you got to check this guy out. And that's when he turned me on to Elegant Gypsy. And then the Romantic Warrior, and then a, a casino, and all of those. He's still my best friend. In fact, he was here tonight for the show. All that. Maybe that's why he's my best friend. Gypsy, 77, casino, 78. Yep. Yep. Anthony Jackson, Jan Hummer, Steve yeah, Gadd. What, what a team. Oh, man. That was a great rhythm section. But Luckily, I, you know, I, I chose the right guys in the beginning. You know, instead of forming my own band, I, I chose the A players. You know, and they, they were just, you know, you didn't have them very long, you know. So when, when I went in with charts, they would read them down instantly. There might have been like a half-day rehearsal, and then bam, you know. I, that good. I had all those albums on cassette. That's how long. <laughs> but uh, your your newest album, yeah. and, and we'll we'll fill in some of the gaps here. But uh, Opus is the latest one, and that's yeah. more of an acoustic thing, right? Well, th there are electric pieces on it, you right. know, which which in fact I've used uh, both of these guitar parts of the PRSs um, on about four or five tracks. So it's a mix of acoustic and electric. Okay. She starts with acoustic, so you get the sense that, and the, and the, I think the second piece is uh, second piece is electric, third piece is acoustic. You know, so yeah. What What would you like the people to know about that album? Because you've got I don't know twenty titles or something 30. like that. Thirty. Thirty. It's thirty now, and uh, it just I wrote that music in a, in a new phase of my life because I I just remarried and I have a baby girl again, and it's. Uh, it's a whole new great adventure, you know, and I've never been happier. You, know, you look the, happy. The re yeah, well, I've got a cold, but I, I'm happy with a cold. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> a happy cold. Yeah. No, they're great. In fact, I, they, they were in Chicago and uh, these last couple of days with me, and I'm going to see them tomorrow in Montreal. They're flying there. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a really uh, good situation. and. You know, I wrote the music and as I normally do in at my place in um, in Sunny Isles in Miami Beach. You know, and I think I've written fifteen albums there, but uh, this time they were there during the whole writing process. Usually, I I kind of, you know, I have to be alone for that. But they were there, and it was it was it was cool. I'm sure there was no crying I to was distract really, I was you. Worried or? I wouldn't be able to write being happy. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, the record company loved that. They said, oh, that's great. We're going to use that, you know. Yeah. So every interviewer said, so what was, what's it like writing being happy? I said, <laughs> Not too many blues tunes on the album. Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 Uh, Elegant Gypsy, such a classic. And, and you kind of, I will not say re-released, but you sort of did Elegant Gypsy and more live. What is that all about? Well, it's, it's this band that you saw tonight. Um, and uh, I guess it was the last couple of tours we we took uh, some tracks that we recorded live and and you know I didn't want to make it just uh, an elegant gypsy you know re-release uh, you know I wanted to include some some other pieces as well so that's where the more comes in you know but uh, that that was the you know the magic period of time you know when the when the record industry was flourishing and you know. And uh, we've made the biggest impact. I think. Well, again, that the was... The beginning of the fusion period and all, you know, so it was, it really had a, a wide range. 
That's a very special album to me because, like I said, that was my first introduction to you. I was, yeah. you know, Mediterranean Sundance, Race with the right. Devil on yeah. uh, Spanish Highway, and, oh, gee, and Anthony Jackson doubling the bass line. Woo! Has definitely yeah. withstood the, the test of time. The introduction of Baco to, to oh, an American yeah. audience, you know, outside of the flamenco area, you know, was was big. I never became a hit single in, in, in some countries. Which, Mediterranean Sundance? Yeah, like an actual single. I got a 45 of it. Wow. I never got to see you with Paco, but I did see you with Jean-Luc Ponty and mm -hmm. Stanley Clark, and I saw it was very special. I can't believe it was 10 years ago when I saw you with the uh, the original classic lineup of Return to Forever, Chick Corea, Al Miola, Stanley Clark, Lenny White. I was telling my wife, I said, to other people, this is the equivalent for me of, like, the Beatles getting back together again. That's the fusion how. Beatles. <laughs> fusion Beatles. Fusion Beatles. <laughs> Oh, boy. I want to ask you a couple questions about your technique. And I remember reading in Guitar Player magazine, probably around you know, 1977, something like that, that muting technique that you do. And I remember reading that, I, I, I think I remember reading that you said when you were just learning to play and you were practicing, you didn't want people to hear that and say, what's that sound? So, right yeah. Window, like right here, like just right down there and you know you're playing through an amplifier and I, you know I was a little shy about it so I would just mute the strings with the palm of my hand and you know and that turned out to be a part of my my style you know I didn't know it would actually be effective but but it is effective because when you when you're turned up kind of on the high side on an amplifier to get sustain on the high strings and uh, you get more clarity by by dampening the strings on 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 the low side, you know what I mean? So you get more more of a staccato effect. And uh, it became a little bit of my stamp, you know. Yeah, yeah that's definitely a bad thing. No. Uh, the other thing, and I, I noticed a lot of this tonight. By the way, what an incredible show tonight, and what a great band that you have. When you play the acoustic guitar and, and you play sort of the classical style stuff, you don't hold your guitar in the traditional way, no. and, you, and you play with a pick. <laughs> <laughs> which really got my attention, and I wonder if you could comment on that. Well, I've never really, you know, studied the, the classical style, you know, with playing with the fingers, you know. So all, all of this picking technique comes from an alternate picking, uh, you know, kind of uh, school, you know. I don't s do that sweep picking thing or you know, pick one note and hammer on. You know, I've learned to, to do the alternate thing from day one. That's why you play so many notes. Right? Well, that's well, it's something you got to work on a little bit, yeah. you know. There's something else I just thought you can't of. Can't cheat, you know, when no, you, you when you play like that. You can't cheat. There's something else that you don't do. I remember, boy, I took a uh, an engineering course at, at Full Sail School in Florida oh, yeah. in 1989, and you came with Gumby Ortiz, and the two of you played, and and somebody asked you something about. Eddie Van Halen or tapping, and you said, I, what, what, what's this? What's this? I don't, so you, you never got into that at all, right? No, no. I, well, they do it well. I mean, I must admit they do it really well, but uh, no. Never interested you at all? No, nah, not really. I mean, uh, you know, it would be copying what they do, you know. But well, I'm, I'm sure you'd find a way to do it. Uh, have to do all that tapping stuff? No. I, I, I don't get me wrong. I think what you do is uh, just fine, just the way you do it. <laughs> the tapping and the rapping for other people. <laughs> tapping and rapping. Let's talk a little bit about your gear, your equipment. Yeah. First of all, what are you holding in your lap here? Well, this is uh, this was a, this is a Paul Reed Smith uh, guitar, but the design of it was something I had in mind. You know, the the finish uh, for a very long time, and then I presented it to him. You know, and I remember it was, it was at, uh, you know, his, his place in um, where, where the factory is. And um, it was a room full of people that worked for him. And I presented this, this concept. And uh, I could see everybody holding their head like, oh, my God, you know, that's going to be very hard to make. And Paul said, you know what? We've never made a guitar like that. That's well, like what? What is, what is the concept? What was so different in their eyes? Well, it's very difficult to 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 have the kind of colors flow into one another like this from one to another. It's a very hard process, apparently. You know, I just had the had had the vision, you know, but they they had to come and you know put this together somehow. 
and uh, it's not easy to do apparently so uh, you know Paul was the, the guy that they gave the green light for it and uh, and the red light and the yellow light and the yeah. blue light and uh, thus called the prism you know it's a beautiful guitar it's beautiful other than the beauty and the way it looks what do you like about P PRS guitars? Because I know you're, you've you've been a big fan for a long time. Beautiful, you know, singing tone. You know, uh, they play very well. They're very well made, and, and sustain is incredible. And the sound has, has always been wonderful. You know, I was one of the first guys to use PRS guitars. You know, myself and Howard Lease from uh, from the band Heart. Oh, okay. Going all the way back to '76. Uh, what, and what kind of strings do you play? These are Diodario, and they're uh, zero, I think, s tens. Yeah. Pretty standard. Yeah. yeah. Standard. Okay. What about the future, Al? You've got thirty albums. You've done so much. You've been a sideman. You've been a leader. You've, you've done the acoustic stuff, the electric stuff. You've played with symphony orchestras. Is there anything else that you've always wanted to do that you just haven't gotten to yet? Stop. I just no, to no, really not allowed. Really tired. Um, you can rest tonight, but yeah, thanks. That's what that's what I thought. No, this is the busiest year ever. You know, I'm going between electric and acoustic back and forth. Uh, we're doing a South American tour, uh, Europe. I'm there like all the time. Well, you live there, don't you? You live in Germany. Uh, well, when I when I met my wife, uh, we we decided to get a place. You know, she she was working out of Munich as a journalist. And she's from uh, the eastern side of Germany, but she was living in Munich, uh, working for a magazine. And um, I always thought, I mean, even when I was like 20, 21 years old, you know, touring Europe, uh, you know, after the Czech Korea period, you know, I'd, I had this vision of living in Munich at some point in my life. Mm. And it happened. I mean, we, st we were there for six years. And uh, we gave the apartment up because the baby was born and, you know, we needed a bigger place. But at that at that point, I had to, to get back to the States to record and also tour in the States electrically yeah. for the first time in a long time. So we were going to have six months over here, and I said, let's let's wait and you know, see what happens. You know? So we live, uh, we bounce between New Jersey and Miami, and uh, but we go to Europe all the time. She I hope you, with me. hope you time that right, the right times of the year to yeah. be up north at the right time. Miami. Yeah, <laughs> I lived down there for six years, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Didn't yeah. care for the summers much, no. but summer up in Jersey. But you know, we're on the road a lot too. Yeah. yeah. But uh, is there something else? Is there another project or another band or another record? You know, something that you haven't done yet <sighs> that that you've been thinking about? I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I thought maybe you had something already brewing or percolating. Well, the, you know, I did that Beatles uh, thing that. Yeah, you know, Abbey Road, which was, you know, something in the back of my mind for a long time. And that was probably, you know, that was one of the highlights of my career to go there and do that. That was amazing. Yeah. And I'd like to do another one. We'll see if it, you know, if I go back there, I'm not sure. But I'd like to do a volume two. I'd like to do a volume two of the Piazzolla work. Um, and then I, what, what else am I doing? I've actually started that project already in my own studio, so... Uh, Which one, the Beatles one or the other one? Uh, not the Beatles, but the Piazzolla solo work. Yeah. This is a very cool venue, by the way. Uh, Will Lee and his Fab Fo Beatles oh, tribute band. They they come here every March or April. Really? They've been coming every year for years. And, uh, we we've come down and hung you out. You have to hear them, but I, I've heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they uh, they're very authentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you be if you weren't a guitar player? If I was five years old, I'd say fireman. <laughs> no, I, I, honestly, I'd be a surgeon. Really? Yeah. I would never go back into music. No way. What, well, what about because you? I Because I saw the, you know, the record industry in its heyday, you know, and it's gone. There's no, no stores anymore. Well, that's the record business. That's not necessarily the, the music business. business. Yeah, I know, but I've, I've done this. Been there, done it, you know, and... You know, you live on the road, there's pluses and minuses to that, you know. But, you know, I would, I would just, I'd be a plastic surgeon, specializing in you know what. Are you going to give your little girl piano lessons and encourage? Uh, my middle daughter took piano lessons and voice lessons, yeah. 
and the little one is uh, show, showing signs of you know musical interests. Okay. But two and a half, you know, we got to wait a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And she'll be bilingual, of course. German and, and, and English. Yeah, I, I spent some time in German. Spent some time in in Machnerkirchen, and I it's uh, south and east. It's very close to the uh, the Czech border. And uh, then I went to the Music Messe in Frankfurt yeah. a couple of years ago. I, I've flown in and out of Frankfurt so many times I had never seen the city. I liked it very much. Did you ever uh, interview Steve Lukather? We might have. Why? Does he have a German I saw, connection? I saw, I saw him perform at the Music Messe ah. in Frankfurt. Okay. He didn't know I was there. We were good friends. He didn't know I was there. and uh, so I was watching him from the side. And, uh, and I, I, I called his roadie over. I said, come here. Come over here. I said, when, when does he change guitars? I said, the next tune he, he plays an acoustic piece. I said, okay, give me the acoustic guitar. I said, well, he stops the song, he's taking a bow. And so I run out there, I go, with the acoustic guitar, here, Mr. Look at there. You know, and I, and I handed it to him, and he just jumped all over the stage, you know. Oh. And we had a little video of that, it was really cool. Oh, that's a great story. It's probably all, over, probably all over YouTube, too. It yeah, was, I, it was all, yeah. I have seen him perform live. Well, Al, this is great. I know you're tired. You got to rest oh. up. You got a lot of traveling to do. But uh, this is such an honor for me to sit down for a few minutes like this. Thank you so much, and uh, good health and uh, <laughs> and and uh, strength, and enjoy the rest of the tour and the rest of the event. I interviewed Elias. Well, I call him Elias Stona. I interviewed him in Florida, and then I interviewed him here just uh, just before the show. You've got a great band. And and they've got a great band leader. Oh, yeah. They learned a lot, let me yeah. tell you. Yeah. So thanks very much. On location in Ann Arbor, Michigan, with our very special guest Al Demiola. I'm John Liebman. You're watching 4GuitarPlayersOnly.com.